Hello my dear friends, I am Dr. Gaurav and today we will be learning jaundice as an overview. Let us see what happens in jaundice. There is excess of bilirubin getting deposited throughout our body. So this bilirubin which is yellow in color getting deposited in the skin, mucous membrane and sclera of our body that is leading to a condition known as jaundice. What happens here is normally bilirubin level is normally bilirubin level is somewhere between 0.3 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter in our blood as a concentration. When this is more than 1.2, then that condition is hyperbilirubinemia. Hyperbilirubinemia, right? But when this concentration is very high, that is when it is more than 3 mg per deciliter, that condition is jaundice. Because in this condition, this excess of bilirubin will be visibly seen on skin, mucous membrane and sclera making it yellowish color. Now, how this bilirubin is formed? This bilirubin is formed when inside the spleen, RBC, red blood cells, the old aged RBCs are broken down inside the spleen by splenic macrophages. So this splenic macrophages break down this RBC inside the spleen to form bilirubin. This bilirubin, what happens, comes in circulation. This bilirubin coming in circulation will bind to a protein known as bilirubin binding protein that is a kind of albumin. Most often that is albumin. This bilirubin is water insoluble. So when it binds to a protein, it becomes water soluble and can be circulated throughout the body. So this bilirubin bound with the protein reaches to liver. Let's say this is liver. When this bilirubin reaches to hepatocyte, this bilirubin will be taken up by the hepatocyte. Now, this bilirubin inside the hepatocyte will be conjugated to form conjugated bilirubin. And this conjugated bilirubin is by adding glucuronic acid. So, glucuronic acid is being added in to form conjugated bilirubin. This conjugated bilirubin is a water soluble form of bilirubin. So when the bilirubin is not conjugated, that form of bilirubin is known as unconjugated bilirubin. So we have learned two types of bilirubin. One is conjugated bilirubin and another is unconjugated bilirubin. What happens then once this conjugated bilirubin is being formed? This conjugated bilirubin will come out inside the bile duct and this bile duct will be open in the duodenum. So let's this is the opening in the duodenum. Duodenum is the part of intestine. So this conjugated bilirubin will come out in the duodenum along with bile juice. Bile juice is also having several other components like bile salts, bile acids, some form of cholesterols. So along with that, this conjugated bilirubin will be excreted out in the intestine. This conjugated bilirubin, when comes out in the intestine, will form urobilinogen. This urobilinogen will further form stercobilinogen. This urobilinogen will be reabsorbed from the intestine. This urobilinogen will be reabsorbed from the intestine and goes in urine. While this stercobilinogen will be excreted via feces. So this stercobilinogen is what gives yellow color to feces, to stool. Yellow color to stool is because of this stercobilinogen and yellowish color of urine is because of this urobilinogen. Now, this is how 
bilirubin is being formed then it comes in circulation as unconjugated bilirubin then it goes to liver to form conjugated bilirubin and from liver this conjugated bilirubin comes out via bile duct in intestine now what happens in jaundice in jaundice what do we see is some form of bilirubin will be raised now we need to understand the different types of jaundice Jaundice is being classified with its cause as prehepatic, hepatic, and posthepatic jaundice. So, these are the three types of jaundice. When the bilirubin that is formed before reaching to the liver is raised. That means when there is a rise in unconjugated bilirubin that leads to prehepatic jaundice. This is because of excess of hemolysis, that is, excess of breakdown of RBCs. So, whenever there will be excess of hemolysis, the jaundice that will appear is will be having excess of unconjugated bilirubin. And this kind of jaundice is prehepatic jaundice. What happens in hepatic jaundice? In hepatic jaundice, there is a pathology in liver. And this pathology in liver will lead to increase in unconjugated bilirubin because the uptake of unconjugated bilirubin will be decreased. And there will also be increase in conjugated bilirubin because when there is pathology in liver, when there is a kind of inflammation in liver in the hepatocyte, this hepatocyte will become leaky and this will leak out the conjugated bilirubin that is formed inside the hepatocyte. And so what will happen? Unconjugated bilirubin as well as the conjugated bilirubin both will be raised. This is the condition that happens in hepatic jaundice. What happens in post-hepatic jaundice? That means there is no problem in bilirubin formation. There is no excess of bilirubin formation. Even liver is quite normal. There is no significant pathology seen in the liver. But there is something that is obstructing the flow of bile juice and leading to a stasis. This condition happens in cholestasis. What is cholestasis? Cholestasis is the condition in which the bile juice is not able to excrete out via duodenum and leading to an excess of bilirubin regurgitating in the blood. That means unconjugated bilirubin must not be very high. Conjugated bilirubin will be easily formed in the hepatocyte but when this conjugated bilirubin will be trying to come out via bile duct this conjugated bilirubin faces some kind of obstruction inside the bile duct and so this conjugated bilirubin will be spilled out in the blood. So because of excess of spilling of conjugated bilirubin, this post-hepatic jaundice patients will be showing you excess of very high conjugated bilirubin and near to normal unconjugated bilirubin. So, in such condition, unconjugated bilirubin will be nearly normal. Few more things that will be seen in such patients are, there will be excess of bile salts also. Because even bile salts will not be able to excrete out, bile acids will not be able to excrete out, the entire bile juice will not be able to excrete out. What will be the features? The fat digestion takes place with the help of bile juice. So, fat digestion will not take place, leading to there is a condition in which stool will become sticky. So, this sticky stool is because of indigestion of fat. Fat soluble vitamin deficiency may also happen in long run because if fat is not digested, fat soluble vitamin will also be not absorbed from the intestine. So, in long run, the patient may also suffer with a deficiency of fat-soluble vitamins. A, D, E and K are the vitamins that are fat-soluble and that will be deficient in these patients.
So, because of this excess of bile salts, these patients will also present with itching. So, itching happens when this bile salts will be deposited in dermis of skin and will be stimulating mast cells leading to itching.